hi guys this is chef Jin academy so welcome back to my channel in this video i'm going to be discussing about truss design i know most of you have been asking me a question on how you can design trusses trusses is a structural system that is majorly used as a roofing system in our day-to-day -day activity so you can have a wooden truss that is the most common wooden truss system you can also have a steel truss so steel truss is usually common when you have a long span of roof in which you need a wider space so in that case you need to provide a steel truss in order to take up your roofing load so that is why in this video i'm going to be designing trusses for steel sections so we are going to be making use of the diagram as you can see in the left hand side of this presentation so you have a steel truss connection where you have an angle section of 50 by 50 by 6 as the truss member both the cord and the and the struct and these trusses are connected to columns this column is universal section of 203 by 102 by 23 we are we all know that trusses are only subjected to axial loads so in that case a truss member can only be subjected to tension or compression so what you have to do is to first of all analyze your truss member we already know this from our structural analysis classes you know you can analyze trusses using joint method or using the section method especially when the truss is statically determinate so in that case we assume that you've understand how to analyze trusses so this video is just going to focus on the design of tension and compression member of truss so a typical application of truss is in buildings just like what you see in this small diagram that is showing a roof truss for a building and you can see the member are in structs and ties when the member is in tile the effect of the load of the member tends to elongate the member but when the member is in struct condition then the result on the member tends to shorten the member as you can see the way the free body diagram for the loading movement on the truss is being shown so let us now take an example generally on how to design trusses using bs 5950 2000 if this is your first time on this channel before we now start the design kindly hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn on the notification you can share this video with your friends i'm sure they are going to like it so all the materials that we'll be using in this video you can actually get them in the description of this video you can check the description i'm going to leave the link to download all the materials i use in this class Trusses are always are only subjected to axial loading. So axial loading can take two forms on the members. It can take compression or on tension. So you need to determine the member that is taking the highest tension and the member that is taking the highest compression. And we find out that the highest tension is uh 30.78 and it was taken by this third member by the third member here, this member here. So we need to know the length of this member. The length is 0.9. Uh, 930 mm then also the the the, ten, the compression member was taken by member dc and is actually you look it looks so uh practical because this member you can see that it's subjected to, to compression just looking at it so this element here the second this truss here is the one that is subjected to ix compression and the value of the ix compression from our analysis was 13.2 kilometers so the dimension is also 600 that is 0.6 mm now to now carry out the design there are some things that we need to determine from this section we already know that the the section that we are designing for is a as an equal angle of 50 by 50 by 6. so let's now come to this powerpoint presentation uh, so with this powerpoint you see that to design a truss we have a variety of steps but we are going to take two steps today in this class so the first thing is we need to determine the section dimension the section dimension for this class 
we already know that the section dimension is uh so let me let us use a blue color the section dimension is 50 you know is an equal angle 50 by 50 by 6 so that's the section dimension we know the section dimension then the next one the next parameter that you need to determine is the thickness the thickness is the last section here which is 6 mm put the uh units 6 mm so that we understand that the dimension is in mm so this is the thickness of the section so this this thickness of section is important this is what you are going to use to classify the uh, the the this trust member and i'm going to explain the classification to us in step two then you need to determine the area of this section this area of this section can be obtained from the section table so let us just go to the section table this is the section table we are on equal angle so you need to look for 50 by 50 by 6 so this is 50 by 50 by 6 then if you look here you see you have a lot of properties in the last class we we take a look at the mass per unit length but in this class you want to first of us look at the area as you can see here you see this is the area of the section area of section it is on this how many column the one two three four is on the fourth column from the thickness so you now go down and look for the area 50 by 50 so that means this is the area the area is 5.69 but you need to be careful of the units the, the unit here is in what is in centimeter square you need to be very careful of the, the units is in centimeter square so if you come back here now so we know that our area was 5.69 5.69 centimeter square but when we are working with uh when you are working with design most times we used to work with mm so it's always good to work with mm so if you convert this guy to mm what are you going to have a simple way of converting is 10 mm will give us one centimeter what do we need we need centimeter square so we are going to square both sides that means 100 mm square that is 10 to the power of 2 mm square will give us one centimeter so that means we multiply this guy by 10 to the power of 2 so that means 569 mm square is going to be the area of our section okay so this is the area of section so the next thing that we need to determine is the radio of gyration about the y-axis. This is also always important. You need to get about the y-axis. The reason why it should be about the y-axis is that is where the loading is being exerted on. Okay, get for an angle section. So uh, even though if the section is not uniform, the radius of gyration about the x and y will be different. But if the section is equal, like in our case, we are dealing with equal angle 50 by 50. So that means the dimension along the x and y is the same. So this will give you the radius of direction of x and y to be the same. I'm just saying this because if you are working with on equal angle, you need to be careful that you pick along the y direction. So you need to go back to our section table again. Then you look for the radius of direction. So this is radius of direction. You can see along x, x and y, y. You can see it's the same thing. They put it under the same table because it's the same thing because we have an equal angle. So you look for your section, we have 50 by 50. Then I think we are under this area. Okay. So 50 by 50 by six, that means we are going to pick 1.5, 1 1.5. Then you also need to note the units. The units is what is in centimeters. So if you convert 1.5 to centimeters, this is definitely going to give you 15 mm. That is the radius of gyration about the y axis is 15 mm. So we've gotten most of the things that we need. Then the length of the truss member. The length of the truss member is just the length of the truss. And we are going to be designing for both the tensile member and also designing for both the compression member. But let us move, let us take the compression member first. We are taking the compression member first. That means the length is 0.6 mm. That is the length. You should put your length in meters, 0.6 meters meters or 600 mm so these are the informations that we need for our design these are the informations that we need for our design so uh then we now move to the next one which is step two 
So in step two, what we'll be doing in step two is we want to be classifying the section. So the first thing to classify the section is your thickness. What is the thickness? Your thickness is six meters, six mm, sorry. So we know this the thickness from our previous class. Then we now go to table nine of the code. Table nine of the code. Table nine of the code will give you the design strength of that steel. In steel, steel is classified into three based on the strength. According to BS 5950, you have steel strength of 275, steel strength of 355, steel strength of 460. The most common steel that we have in practice is 275. So that is the one that you should use for your design. So that means I'm talking about the classes of steel. We have three classes, sorry. We have S275. S275, it means that all in all the steel in that class, the maximum strength there is 275. We have S355. It means all the steel in class S355, the maximum strength there is 355 Newton per mm square. Then the fourth one is S460. It means all the steel in class S460 has a maximum strength of 460 Newton per mm square. So let me show you table nine of the code. So let's come to the design code. This is the design code. So let's look for table nine. This is table 11. You can just scroll up. So that is table 10. So this is table nine. So you see, we have different class of steel grade. S275, S355, X460. Then uh what the what this means is I, I've said to you that S275 is the most practicable one. That this is one that you can easily find that it is usually used in construction. Then in just in rare cases is where you go for S355, S let's say you are dealing with massive buildings that you need materials with higher higher grade. So now, what do, what does all this means? All this means is this is the thickness less than or equals to. What does this mean is if the thickness is less than or equals to sixteen, the the strength is two seven five. If the thickness is less than forty or equals to forty, that is, it is greater than sixteen but less than forty or equals to forty, then the strength is two six five. If this, if the thickness, that is, if the thickness of the section, but which thickness are we talking about here? You know, this is a, we are dealing with an angle section. Let's say, for example, you are dealing with the H section. You know, in an H section, you have, you have your web, you have the flanges. Sometimes the thickness of your web might be different from the thickness of your flanges. So if you want to classify that kind of section, you should pick the, part of the section that I have the, the least thickness. Like now, let's say your web is, uh, even though in I section, you classify the eye, you classify the, the, the web, then you now pick the least. So you use the one that have the least thickness in the two parts. So that is how this thing goes. It, this one means that the section is greater than 63, the thickness is greater than 63, but it's less than or equals to 80, then this is what you use for your strength. In our own case, our thickness is 6 mm, so that means it is less than 16, and we are using steel grade of S275, so it's less than 16, that means our design strength, PY design strength, is going to be 275. I hope you understand that simple logic. So if you come back here, that means from table 9, our design strength was 275 Newton, per mm square. So to now classify the section, you need to come to table 11. To classify the section, you need to come to table 11. So on table 11, let me just show you where we have table 11 in the code. This is table 11 in the code. This is used for determining the limiting width to thickness ratio for sections other than Circular hollow section and right um road code form hollow section and road form hollow section. So then if you go to good table 12, this is where you find the classification method for code form hollow section and road form hollow section. But because you are dealing with an angle section, you just come to table 11 and you look for where you have angle section. If you look at the third option, you have angle compression due to bending. 
both criteria must be satisfied. That is, this is an angle section. Then you can also look at single and double angle with component separated axial compression. That is, when the member is subjected to uh, axial compression, then you can use this table. But when the member is subjected to only compression, that is, the compression is due to bending. For example, let's say you are dealing with portal frame structures. You know, in that kind of situation, you are ex exerting your angle section to bending. Then you use this table, this part of the table. But if you can see, both of them are actually the same thing. Both of them are almost the same thing. So we need to classify our member if it is semi-compact. We have four classifications. We have class one, class three, class two, and class three, and class four. As you can see, you can't find any, any class four in this table. What it means is if it does not fall in any of these classes, that means the member is a class four. Shall we get? So now, uh, So how do we need to classify this guy? To classify this guy now, so to classify our own section, the compression is due to axial loading. So that means we'll be using uh we'll be using this table single double and double angle with components separated axial compression. All these three conditions must be satisfied. That is, we need to determine our B over T. What is the B? The B is the dimension. If you check through the design, the, uh, the C table, you can see what B and A mean. A is the small B. You can check through here. So this A and B signifies the, um, the dimension of the, of the member. Then you can read through the, the definition of dimension B, D, T. They say B and T are flange dimension, D and T are web dimension. But because you are dealing with angle section, you know, there is no flange, there is no web. That means your B and your T means the dimension of the sizes. That is the dimension. You know, we said dimension of our section is 50 by 50 by, uh, 50 by 50 by T. So that means the, the B is 50, the D is 50. That's the meaning. So if you come to design code now, that means our B over T is 50 over 6. And that will give us something. D over T is also 50 over 6. That will also give us something. So let us get what this is going to give us. That will be 50 divided by 6. You have 8. 8.3. This is what you have for this one. 8.3. Here you have 8.3 for both. So let's now look at where this thing falls into. To now get where it falls into, you need to determine something we call epsilon. This epsilon actually has a formula. The formula is epsilon is 275 over PY. Your PY is your design strength to power of 0.5. So that means uh, you need to determine epsilon which is equals to 275 divided by the strength. Our strength in our own case is 275 as well. 275 to power of 0.5. So this is the formula for epsilon. You can find all these in table 11. So this is going to give us one. That is what we needed. But it is not really epsilon that we needed. What we needed to classify our section is we need to know if you can see now, according to this tab that we are using, that means our section, either B over T, D over T, or this guy, must not be what? Must not be, uh, you cannot classify them as class one, and you cannot classify them as class two. So they are always class three or class four. Here we get. So if what we got was less than the value here, was less than 15 epsilon for D, B over T, was less than 15 epsilon for d over t was less than b over t divided by t uh must be less than 24 epsilon so that means our epsilon is one that means the limiting for the member to be a semi-compact is it must be less than 15 for b over t d over t must be less than 15 and b plus d over t must be less than 24 because our epsilon was one so that means that what we got here was less than 15. 
then d over t was also less than 15. then if you had b plus d over t b plus d that is 100 divided by 6 that is going to give you 16.666 is also less than 24 epsilon so that means that our section is semi-compact so we are going to write in the conclusion part here that the classification is semi-compact okay semi-compact so once we've been able to classify the section then you can now go on with your design so once you've designed you've classified the section then you're not determining the slenderness ratio then you do other stuff so we'll be we'll be finishing that in our next class